Hi folks, did I get your attention? I figured I would. That was kind of the point of the exercise really. Um, and I want to try to explain to you today what that last video was all about and why I did that and did it in the way that I did. And actually I thought it was important for you to see me in that state after the experience that I had. I mean what, what you were looking at there was a man trying to deal with have his entire life flash before his eyes and try to make his way through every conspiracy theory he's ever looked at. You know, while, you know, and, and having all my ancestral history flash before my eyes and everything. And uh, then trying to deal with a, an experience that I've, I've never had before. It was the most bizarre experience. As I said when I was talking, and if I'm looking over to the left, folks, it's not a conspiracy theory. There's nobody here. I'll just show you there's nobody here, okay? See, there's nobody here, folks. There's nobody here. There's no one giving me any prompters or anything like that okay it's all good no one over there either. i'm just looking okay there's, there's nobody around all these sort of conspiracy theories that people come up with reflections in my glasses it's all good folks there's nobody here okay but um i thought it was important for you to see me in that state what i was what i was dealing in the state that i was in you know and that was day five you should have seen me on day one and day two it was it was just ridiculous yeah but like i said with this experience, I'm lying in my bed and this white light comes down and hits me in the forehead. You know, and this was bizarre, folks, because, you know, and saying that, this isn't like uh, any sort of light from God or anything like that. This was this was rectangular. This was a square white light. This wasn't the voice of God or anything. This was technology, you know. So this was a really, really bizarre experience that I had. And then I started having these massive downloads of all of this stuff. And um, this is going on for like three days or something, you know, and it's taken me five or six days to even process it. And I figured out the, the puzzle, how it works and, and what a trap all of this has been. And that's why I called this video The Truth Trap, because that's really what it's been. And I said on that other, not really a report, that thing, whatever it was that I uploaded and, and gave you to let you know what I was going through. I said on that that um, I thought I'd missed my ride. You know, There's a chance I might have missed my ride. And you know, now that I've had a chance to process things, I'm, I'm kind of glad I missed that ride because I figured out what that ride was. But the, what I said, you know, the, the truth is the earth is flat. Now, something that I've always said during my broadcasts is that truth is subjective depending on what you want to believe. I mean, I said that, you know, truth is the earth is flat because I wanted to get everybody's attention. I want to get the attention of the, the flat earthers, the globe earthers, and the entire truth community because I, I think you need to hear this. It's an important message. And I'm going to be reading something to you as well because it's important. You need to look at this and you need to think about this, folks. And that's all I'm asking is that you think about what I'm saying. Because as um, Bill Cooper said, and I said Bill Hicks last time, but it's Bill Cooper said, when you tell the truth, you piss everyone off. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of pissed off as well. Now I've figured out the truth about what we're doing and what I've been involved with, with the truth movement and what this really is. And hopefully I can put this together in some sort of a coherent form that you'll understand it, folks, because I tell you, I've been processing a lot of stuff. But I've figured out how it all works. And the reason I use game when I say game is because that's the way they play it. They, they play the destruction of worlds like a game. That, and that's what they're doing. But anyway, um, let me see if I've got an edit here. If I've got to stop sometimes and think, I'll, I'll put a couple of edits in, but I, I, I try not to edit in these videos. But like I said, I've often said on, on the show, um, truth is subjective depending on what you want to believe and that belief is the enemy of knowledge. These are two really important things. And something else I've always said is that you can have no stake in the outcome. So a lot of the stuff that I've said in the shows, I mean, I've known it to be true, but, I don't know, you know, but I've never really known why I said it and known the significance of why I've been saying that, but, but now I do. You know, a lot of things have been made clear for me. But um, how, could, how can you have a globe and how can you have a flat and how can you have uh, a holographic universe? Because that, that's the reality. I mean, the globe universe or the globe Earth, the flat Earth, the holographic universe, the fractal universe, the electric universe... They all fit together and they all exist, coexist at the same time. And I'm going to try to explain to you how that works at the moment. The Earth that we live on is a globe. It's a beautiful globe Earth. 
But the earth that we operate on is also flat. And I'm going to try to explain this to you, how it works, you know, because again, it, it depends on what you believe. Belief is subjective. You know, truth is subjective depending on what you want to believe. And you can have two truths. It depends on what your belief system is. And, you know, and it looks at how virtual reality is cre created as well. I mean, we think it's going to be all these computers we build and they're going to transfer our consciousness into a mainframe and rah, rah, rah. Well, yeah, they are. That's what they want to do. But the question is how they're going to do that. <clears throat> What's the MO? You know, is it going to be hooking us up with SCART plugs or something? Or is it just going to be done with Wi-Fi? You know, because that's the way it's going to be done, folks. Because that's what they tried to do with me on Saturday night. But I'd, I'd looked at the whole thing with, with flat earth and globe earth, and I thought, well, hang on, both are possible. The earth is a globe, yes. The earth is flat, yes. And they can both coexist at the same time. And as soon as I uploaded that video, they thought, wow, we've got him, and they hit me, but I, I don't believe either one. I can see the truth in each one, but I don't believe either one. So I think they kind of missed out. That's why I missed the ride, and I'm glad I missed the ride. But... And I'm, I told you, folks, I'm, this is really convoluted, but I've kind of I've figured out what the truth movement's been all about. And it's not about what we think it is. It's actually been a trap to try to get us into the mainframe, which they're going to do with Wi-Fi, which was what they tried with me on Saturday night. And they sell it to you as a planetary alignment, and they sell it to you as ascension. But really, it's not ascension. It's taking your consciousness and putting it into the mainframe, and you won't be able to tell the difference because of all the awareness we've been putting into the mainframe. Now I've got to read you something here and it's a, a passage from um, a, a book by Carlos Castaneda and you know, whether you like Castaneda or not folks I mean this is really important it's probably one of the most important things or the most important thing that was written in any of the Castaneda books and it talks about the predator mind and I often recommended that people look at this I think I recommended it on my discombobulated talk the other day that people read The Predator Mind. It, it's so important, folks, because this is the way through the puzzle. You know, because the reality is that there, there's a predator here. There's a, that everybody is under mind control, folks. We've got this, this thing that makes us have wars all the time. You know, no matter how much we try to fix the world, we never get it fixed. You know, because a few problems... No matter how much we try to fix the world, we never get it fixed because the people that are running the world are completely overtaken by this predator mind. And this is, is, is what has caused all of these problems. And when we try to fix these problems, you know, we, we search for a way out. We're not realizing how the predator works and what the predator is. And I need to read you a little bit out of this, uh, this passage by Don Juan, what he says. Uh, he calls this the topic of topics, the predator mind. And I've got to go through this so you'll understand how, how all this works, folks. Trust me on this. Um, the predators, he says, they took us over because we are food for them and they squeeze us mercilessly like because we are their sustenance. Just as we rear chickens in chicken coops, the predators rear us in human coops. Therefore, their food is always available to them. I want to appeal to your analytical mind. Think for a moment and tell me how you would explain the contradiction between the intelligence of man, the engineer, and the stupidity of his belief systems or the stupidity of his contradictory behavior. It is the predators who have given us our systems of beliefs, our ideas of good and evil, our social mores. The predators are the ones who set up our hopes, our expectations and dreams of success or failure. They've given us covetousness, greed and cowardice. It is the predators who make us complacent, routinary, and egomaniacal. In order to keep us obedient, meek, and weak, the predators engage themselves in a stupendous maneuver. Stupendous, of course, from the point of view of the fighting strategist, but a horrendous maneuver from the point of view of those who suffer it. They gave us their mind. Do you hear me? The predators gave us their mind, which becomes our mind. The predator's mind is baroque, contradictory, morose, and filled with the fear of being discovered any minute now. I know that even though you have never suffered hunger, you have food anxiety, which is none other than the anxiety of the predator who feels at any moment its maneuver is going to be uncovered and its food is going to be denied. 
Through the mind, which after all is their mind, the predator injects into the lives of human beings whatever is convenient for them. The predators ensure in this manner a degree of security to act as a buffer against their fear. Okay, so that's how this predator works. And this predator is what it's in it's it's talked of in all cultures folks i mean the the africans call it the chitahuri the uh the gnostics called it the the archons um the arabics call it the jinn i mean it, it's in all cultures they talk about this this mind that gets in and infects you um the cultures of ancient um or old russia and stuff just simply called it the social parasite I think uh, a lot of American Indian cultures also refer to it as the social parasite, also the Wakito virus. The thing that makes you do bad things even though you know they're bad and you, you do them anyway. You know, but it's this, this, it's, it's this thing that makes you want to get things organized and it's the, the brain chatter in your head and gives you the desires that you don't know why you're doing this, but you just do it anyway. It's the predator mind that makes this happen. And it's important to understand what the predator mind feeds on. Because when you understand what its food is, you begin to see what the truth movement is and what we've been tricked into doing and what they're attempting to do now with this whole virtual reality thing and the whole flat earth thing and, and, and where it's all going. And so just have a listen to this bit. Infant human beings are born as strange luminous balls of energy covered from top to bottom with a glowing coat, something like a plastic cover that is tightly adjusted over their cocoon of energy. That glowing coat of awareness was what the predators consumed. And that when a human being reached adulthood, all that was left of that glowing coat of awareness was a narrow fringe that went from the ground to the top of the toes. That fringe permitted mankind to continue living, but only barely. Man was the only species that had that glowing cocoon of awareness outside that luminous cocoon. Therefore, he became easy prey for an awareness of a different order, such as the heavy awareness of the predator. This narrow fringe of awareness was the epicenter of self-reflection, where, uh, where man was irremediably caught. By playing on our self-reflection, which is the only point of awareness left to us, the predators create flares of awareness that they proceed to consume in a ruthless and predatory fashion. They give us inane problems that force those flares of awareness to rise, and in this manner they keep us alive in order for them to be fed with the energetic flares of our pseudo-concerns. Just think about that, folks. I mean, I know that was a bit of a read, but just think about that for a moment. If you've got a predator... It's making you think that you want to do these things and know these things you don't really need to want or know. And every time you search for something and you go, oh, there's the answer, it harvests a little piece of energy from you. All of this begins to make perfect sense. You know, this is why they, they get the kids and they put them in school and they give you all these inane problems at school and you've got to think about all this stuff and you get the answer. When you get the answer, they consume that little bit of awareness from you. I take it from you, you write it down in a book, it leaves you, it becomes part of the book and becomes the spell. What Then they move it into the technological world that we've got now and we're doing it all online. And all of the sparks of awareness that you're having are feeding the predator, which is being all now transferred into this mainframe, into a virtual world. And there's a world being created inside there, the mainframe, which is just as real as the world here. And at the moment, you exist within both worlds. And in that world, the Earth is flat. And in this world, the Earth is still a globe. But really, they're both the same world. Because your consciousness and your awareness now exists within both worlds. It depends on what you choose to believe. That's why you, you need to be careful what you choose to believe. Because belief is the enemy of knowledge. You know, the truth is the world is flat, depending on what you want to believe. Because we are now in a position of consciousness... We have, where we have already been half transferred into the mainframe simply by transferring all of our flares of awareness into the mainframe. You know, and what the truth movement is doing, you know, we're searching for a way out of this mess, searching for a way out of this slavery system. 
but by searching for it and, and oh, here it is, here's the, here's the answer, here's the answer. All we're doing is giving all of these flares of awareness to the predator which is controlling our minds, which is making us do the search to begin with. Because the truth is the only answer is in your heart. You don't need to search for the truth, you already know the truth. And when you look at um, things such as the, the biblical text and the quickening and all this sort of stuff, this is the quickening when you've got everybody there searching for the truth and that's what the truth movement is. And you think about it, folks, they tell us in their language and they tell us in our language as well. You know, because we've done this many, many times before is the thing. They, they keep tricking us and bringing us back because we keep searching for the way out, not really realizing that the way out is within, in stillness, in the heart. Because the only thing that's powering this machine is the energetic flares of our pseudo concerns, which is feeding the mind of the predator, which is making us conduct these searches to begin with. You see the loop that we're caught in here. And that's why they create the truth movement. And they create the quickening. So then they can get these huge flares of awareness and then they can just harvest that from people. Which is why they want that huge revelation that the earth is flat. And it, it will be if you believe it is. And then you'll be trapped in the mainframe and you won't even know that you're there. That's the way they're doing it. And they'll, they'll sell that to you as ascension. And that's what they're doing with the Flat Earth Movement. And that's how they are transferring our consciousness into the virtual world without people even realizing that's what's happening. So in that way, you've got the fractal reality because you've got the, the bigger world, then you've got the world in the computer screens. And then you've got the world that we're now creating inside these computer screens. And how far back does it go? Because we never figured out that it's the very search itself which is keeping us locked within the matrix. That's how it works, because we forgot the, the one thing, that it is our, the energetic flares of our pseudo-concerns which is causing this whole thing to go along. So, you know, you're looking for the truth, you know, the truth is within you, and, and the clue, like I said, the clue is in the language. You know, when you're at school and when you're doing something and you're, you're searching for the answer to something, what does the teacher tell you to do? Go do your research. Why don't you say, well, go do your search? Because the the... The teacher is probably just a walk-in. It's a biological robot that's there to trap the actual consciousness that comes through the system. And oh, you're the one that's in here before. You've been recycled again. Go and search, research, research, research. Just keep doing it. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. Give us those flares of your energetic consciousness. Give us those flares of your concerns. The only way out of this matrix is. Not to fight the system, not to fight all that stuff. You know, the, the parasites that are running the government, they're going to do what they're going to do. That's what they do. They, get, they slash and burn, and there's no way we're going to stop them. You know, I can report on the fires all you want, but we're not going to stop the fires until the government wants to stop the fires because they control the weather. And if you think they don't, well, they do, folks. There's enough evidence to show they do. There's, you know, Australian guys that have got all these weather control patents. I mean, they even said that they brought the rain in and stopped the fires in, in 2017. So, you know, they can do this, folks. The only way to stop the predator and to get out of this matrix is to stop searching for the answer and realize that you already know the answer. You know, like um, it says in, in that uh, story of the predator mind, you know, you've got to stop feeding the predator and grow your energetic cloak of awareness back. You know, with, with what I experienced the other night, that trying to grab me and pull me into the mainframe was what was happening. That's what they're trying to do, folks, and they're doing it through through wireless technology. Like I said, that light that I saw, you know, and of course I'm supposed to see that as, oh, the light from God, I'm the chosen one, and all that sort of stuff. You know, like I said, yeah, I'm the chosen one. That's what I was trying to get across to you the other day when my mind was all still bamboozled and combobulated, is that all, all aspects are true. So, of course, when that happened, I'm supposed to come on and say, oh, my God, you know, the earth's flat, and I'm the chosen one, and all this sort of stuff. And they create this huge, huge spread across the internet that, oh my God, Max has lost the pot, he thinks he's God. And of course, conveniently, I've been told that there's a news article that mentions my name. It says, oh, all these conspiracy theorists are saying there's directed energy weapons starting the fires. And they've got a picture of that red beam coming down from the sky, which I actually had on my clip and said, this is not what they're doing. So, you know, I actually said the opposite of what they're accusing me of saying. But that's just come out in the news now and put my name out there in the news. You can't tell me that isn't coincidental with this tech, whatever it was, 
because this was not the, the light of God. This was technology. I mean, I don't think God uses square cameras, you know. So you can't tell me all this isn't, isn't pre-orchestrated, this whole thing. I was supposed to have this event, which completely melted me down, which it did. And then I was supposed to come out and proclaim myself the new Messiah and that the earth is flat and that I know everything and all, everything, rah, 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 rah. What I've done, though, is figure out how the puzzle works. And there's a, a key here as well, because it says also in this, uh, in this text by Don Juan, this text uh, talking about the predator mind, it says here, you know, we can't free ourselves of the predator, but what we can do, the only alternative left for mankind, the only way out of this matrix, and this is why they wipe our memory, folks, because if anybody gets this, and if anybody figures it out, and you know, it brings this information back, and you start the, the journey with this knowledge, then they won't get you to begin with. And when that light hits you, you'll have your full code of awareness. And we just may be able to get out of the matrix that we're in and get back into a position where we can save this, this world that we're living on. Yeah, because as we destroy the world within the, the, the matrix, we also destroy the real earth, the living earth, the mother earth that we live on. Yeah, but what they're tricking people into doing is transferring their energy and their life and their awareness from the mother earth and transferring it into the motherboard and people can't tell the difference you know and people never started promoting the flat earth until computers came out you know the world wide web the international net the net the internet what's it for it's a fishing exercise to grab everybody's consciousness and bring it down to the next level and sell it to you as ascension it's not what it is folks you're being removed from the earth that you live on by giving all of your awareness to the virtual world. Even the stuff that we create now and type now, none of it exists. You can't go and pick it up and read it. It's all going into the virtual world. You know, and the only way to, to, to stop this happening is to stop giving energy to the predator and realize that all of these things you keep searching for, it's not you searching for it. That's the predator mind. And what you've got to do is, is get your code of awareness back. So you know this and you have this information when you start the next level which I would suggest all the things to say you shouldn't step into the light and all that sort of stuff. I mean, that, that's probably what's going on. The light's probably the, they zap you, you know, the way it is and, and kill all that. I don't know. I don't know how it works. But anyway, but it says here in this text, it says the only alternative left for mankind is discipline. Discipline is the only deterrent. Discipline being the capacity to face with serenity odds that are not included in our expectations. No stake in the outcome. You know, the art of facing infinity without flinching. Listen to that again, folks. You've got to be able, you know, discipline is the capacity to face with serenity odds that are not included in our expectations. If you can do that, not have those flares of awareness, what happens? It says the result is that discipline, this discipline makes the glowing coat of awareness unpalatable. The result is that the predators become bewildered. An inedible code of awareness is not part of their cognition, I suppose. After being bewildered, they don't have any other recourse than from refraining from continuing their task. The predators don't eat our, if the predators don't eat our glowing code of awareness for a while, it will keep growing back. By means of discipline, we can push the predators away long enough to allow our code of awareness to grow beyond the level of our toes. Once it grows beyond the level of our toes, it grows back to its natural, natural size. The glowing coat of awareness is, is like a tree. If it is not pruned, it grows to its natural size and volume, and as awareness reaches higher levels than the toes, tremendous maneuvers of perception become a matter of course. See, the whole, the whole search for the truth to find our way out of here is the very thing that is keeping us locked in here. And that's how the truth movement has been a trap. You know, the whole globe earth, flat earth, both exist and you can exist in both at the same time. And depending on what your belief is, whatever you think is true, you're gonna find the evidence to support that. If you think the earth is flat, you're gonna find everything you need to prove the earth is flat. If you think the earth is a globe, you're gonna find everything you need to prove the earth is a globe and you're never gonna be able to figure it out because you exist in both worlds at the moment. 
You live, you exist on the Mother Earth and on the motherboard. And most of the information you're going to be looking for to prove the Mother Earth exists on the motherboard. So think about what's going on here, folks. And it's the, the very search for this information, which is causing these flares of awareness, which is ensuring that you will eventually be trapped within the motherboard. That's the way it goes. I mean, I feel ripped off because the entire truth movement has, has been a, a setup. It's been a setup to cause us to feed this predator mind. And it's that, that very energy we're giving it that is creating the, the virtual world that they're trying to trap us into. You know, the old saying, where attention goes, energy flows. We even look at that wrong, but it's our energy. It's our ethereal energy, the, all of our attention, everything. As we're putting all of our information and our thoughts into this flat, motherboard we're burning it all in the real world and we're not paying attention to what's going on in the real world so for many the earth is becoming flat and for many the only way they will escape the destruction of this world that they're allowing to happen is by allowing this so-called ascension to happen and putting themselves on the mainframe on the next level down yeah and that, that's what's going on here folks and that's why yeah the truth is the earth is flat and the truth is that the earth's a globe it's just depending on your belief, folks, because both are absolutely true. And this is what I got from all this last night. I mean, this was a really bizarre experience, folks. And like I'm saying, this is not the light of God or anything. This was, this was technology. I'm pretty sure God doesn't use square lights, you know. So, you know, and, and of course, like I said, I was supposed to do the whole thing and say I'm the Messiah. that would be why this article's in the newspaper and stuff. And they've said that I was saying there was laser beams coming, which is exactly the opposite of what I said. So obviously I'm on the radar now. And this, this whole thing has been a bit of a setup. Another thing it says as well, you know, um, because I'm supposed to be the enlightened one now because I'm the one who saw the light, you know. I'm the enlightened one. The light hit me. So I'm, I'm the target, I would say, folks. And um, anything could happen from this point, I would say, because as they also say, enlightenment is a destructive process. So, you know, I've kind of put myself on the spotlight <laughs> another pun pun not intended but you know we'll just see where it goes from here and it's been a bit of a concern but anyway, this is this is what i wanted to share with you folks this is what i was trying to figure out the other night when i was here and i was halfway through the process and like i said that's on day five this was a profound uh, profoundly insightful thing that happened but no i'm not saying i'm the second coming i'm not saying that i'm christ consciousness i'm not saying any of that sort of stuff i just figured out how they're playing the game and the parasites that are making us run this world and the way they're, they're getting us to destroy this world is the same way we play multi-level games. You know, that's the why the multi-level games look the way that, that they do because that's, this is the way they're, they're using our mind to destroy this world in, in levels and stages. So that's why I refer to it as the game now. And that's why you're not going to stop them by, by screaming out about the government and, and stopping these things that they're doing. Not unless everybody gets exactly what's going on here and, and how by searching for the truth, all we're doing is researching and researching and researching and researching. And the reason they call it that is because we've done it so many times before. Because we don't understand when we come in here, it's the researching itself which is keeping us trapped within this realm. How you get out is by being able to face infinity without flinching. Like he said, you um, the... A capacity to face with serenity odds that are not included in our expectations. That's the way to do it. So yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you folks. Sorry I was so discombobulated the other day. But I, again, I mean, I think it's important for you to see that I'm human. And I'm sorry if I freaked everybody out if you, you know, don't get the way I've explained it to you today. Because, you know, it, it's a lot to put together. And I think there's even more to it. So, um, you know, it is what it is, folks. And um, apparently there's been a few people that have been a little bit concerned. Oh, my God, Max Egan isn't your real name. Well, folks, I said in 2007, before I even came on air, that Max is my middle name that I used in honour of my uncle, and that Egan is my son's middle name. It's, a, it's my pen name. I've got that on my website. It's been there since 2007. And, yeah, I'll tell you my real name one day. It's not important. I mean, I've always gone by Max, which is my middle name. And um, the reason I don't tell you my real name is just for travel reasons and stuff, because obviously I'm on the radar and I don't think it's a, a good time to tell you that name. It's, it's an unimportant name anyway. But I was just, uh, I thought it was interesting that, that I chose Max Eden, the 33, rah, rah, rah. And the way that came through, I mean, when you look at the way they destroy worlds in levels, 
I'm pretty certain that they're going to wipe these these uh, countries out to the 33rd parallel. So uh, I'm I'm thinking that's the safest place to be between the 33rd parallels. I think that's why we see the 33 everywhere, folks, to let those in the know, to know that they have to be between these points. I think there's a good good uh, deal with it in that. And also, people were concerned that I had a swastika on my hand the other day. That was there for a reason. Um, when I was going through the whole stuff and the whole thing from Hyperborea and I was looking at the races and I was tracing the white race because I had I had memories coming through that were ancestral memories I don't know how much of it was programming I don't know how much of it was memories because like I said this wasn't the light of God this was technology so you know I'm, I'm very aware that there's going to be people that are going to be wanting to mess with me as well and but I think what they were trying to do was literally lift my consciousness up into a mainframe and put in like a, they've got deep fake technology now, mate. Folks, they can put any anybody they want in, you know. So who knows? I mean, maybe it was something like that. I, I don't know. I've got a cup of tea here, but um, yeah, this this was technology. But when I was going through all of that, and I was going through my roots, I've got some friends here who are um, a Russian woman and and you know. She, into all the European stuff and yeah, the swastika is actually a, a, an ancient symbol from Hyperborea and when I was going through all that stuff of me being a descendant of, from Hyperborea obviously because I'm having this experience and what was coming through from the experience they told me the other day you should put a, a swastika on your on your hand somewhere it's a protection they used to use that as protection against the parasites so I thought okay so I'll put that on my hand and it actually helped you know so of course Everything's backwards and everything's a paradox, folks. And I'm not saying Hitler was a good guy. He don't. He was part of the program. He was just part of the whole thing to set this whole thing in process, just part of the game, their game that they're playing, these sick, whatever they are, that are running the show. But um, that, of course, was why they set World War II up and used the swastika as the symbol for Hitler, so everyone would hate the swastika. And see, this is terrible, evil symbol. When you'll find that there's cultures through Europe, through Mongolia, I mean, all through Europe, people have swastikas all over their homes still because they know that the swastika keeps the parasite away, keeps the mind parasite away. They hate that symbol. Uh, that's why they made you hate that symbol, so you won't have that anywhere near you, so they can come and infect you the way they do. It's, it's tricky stuff the way they do it, folks, but but that's that's all that came through on this. So, you know... This is why the globe earthers and the flat earthers and the, the fractal universes and the electric universes and everybody needs to stop fighting with each other. And they ne really need to realize the, you know, the energy we're giving to the system by even going on these quests, you know. And like I said, so many things I've said during the radio shows that I've done for you over the years have, have said this. You know, the problem is I don't listen. And, you know, people have often said to me, you don't listen, Max. And, you know... It's interesting because when I look back at some of the stuff I've said on the shows, you know, I've, I've said the right stuff, but I wasn't listening to what I was saying. If, if I'd applied some of that, I would have seen these signs and blah, 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 and I would have expected something like this to happen. But, you know, yeah. But that's kind of the best I can make of it at the moment, folks. I mean, I, honestly, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. And I expect to see some pretty major changes in my life now like i said i think i'm pretty much on the radar with this and i don't think that news article mentioning my name accusing me of saying exactly the opposite of what i said is any sort of coincidence that, that would have happened at the same time as this whole event and like i said that was that was tech that's some sort of technology that's being used to do that so um yeah that's about all I can give you at the moment, folks. But hopefully you'll see that I haven't gone crazy. No, I wasn't being coerced. I just wanted to get everybody's attention. Because, you know, I tell you, folks, I, I feel kind of ripped off realizing what the truth movement has really been for. It, it's been a trap, and it's just been there to keep us asking questions and keep us solving problems because they want that little flare of awareness. And when we've solved all the problems and we figure out what the game is, then they've got all that awareness. They've got all the stuff. And they can trash the level and start on the next level because that's the way they play it. They play it as levels. It's pretty sick stuff, but that's what they do. So um, so who is they? Who's the they that's doing it, folks? Ultimately, it's us by listening to that little voice in our head that tells us we want to do things that we really know we shouldn't be doing. 
And the only way to get out of this realm that we're trapped in is to still that voice, or at least not listen to that voice, or at least not feed that voice. The only way, folks, is to have no stake in the outcome. That's the only way you're ever going to get to that point. The only way to have the discipline to, to be able to face with serenity odds that are not included in your expectations, to be able to face inflin infinity without flinching. You know, and you look at it and we've, we've done it all backwards. We've done it all the wrong way. Um, in our search for the truth, we've actually, you know, yeah. See, I even said it's, it's, you're not going to know what the truth is until you've got the freedom to find out. See, I've known this all along because I've played this so many times. We've played this so many times before, folks. We've, we've played through this game. And ultimately, we end up in the same place because we keep searching for the truth. And then we come back and we keep researching. That's the problem. It's a interesting sort of a paradox when you think about it. I hope I made sense with all that. And I hope you see what I was going through the other night. I'm sure you do. I mean, I haven't read the comments, but I'm sure they're horrendous. I've got like 141 emails and like about 50 Skype messages and just... I haven't been able to answer any because it's just been just information overload and I've been trying to figure out what the hell just happened to me, you know, so because I certainly know I'm not the son of God, you know. Why did I see this light? Why was it a square light? Why did it, it actually literally came in the room like slowly. You could see the face of the screen sort of. It was like almost like on a conveyor belt. And it was like ethereal. I'm thinking, how's it even getting through the roof? So I'm thinking about all this stuff. I'm not saying why they're going, oh my God, I'm ascending, you know. Because that's the way they're doing it, folks. They're selling it to people as ascension. That's what they think it is. And it's not. They're actually, I think they're sucking people's consciousness into the mainframe. I think that's what these scrying mirrors are for. You know, we're all energetic. Everything's energetic. All this wireless stuff that we're doing, what's really being carried around in these airwaves, you know. And, uh. Yeah, watch out, folks. Watch out what you're being involved in. Um, and watch out what, what you're thinking. Watch out what you're, what you're searching for. You know, you don't need to know all these things. You already know the answer. And, you know, if you can know it without, or even if you're going to search for it, don't be surprised when you find it. Well, it's going to be a help because, as I said, folks, by searching for our way out of the prison, we're actually creating our prison because... We're not paying attention to the fact that it isn't our mind that wants us to do the searching. So that's what I learned from this whole experience. And um, like I said, I think things may change for me from this point. We'll just see. I'll just play it by ear and see what happens. But I'll, I'll continue to bring you stuff as long as I'm able, as long as you don't think I'm completely mad. But um, yeah, that, that, that's what I got, folks. That's how it all works. We just, we just missed the plot. We got tricked and we went the other way. But anyway, that's the best I can give you at the moment, folks. And I'm sorry if anybody got freaked out by my appearance the other night. But like I said, I think it's important for you to see what I go through sometimes trying to trying to get through this mess. But uh, anyway, folks, no, I haven't been infiltrated. I haven't got police around me. There's no one around me looking. And I'm not scripted. Or, you know, it's just... It, 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 it was like no experience I've, I've ever had and it hit me like a freight train out of the blue at like 12.15 in the morning when I just lay down to bed. You know, I lay down to go to sleep and suddenly this happens and I'm like, wah, and then I'm in, in chaos world in my mind for like five, six days. So it's been pretty crazy. But anyway, folks, sorry to freak you out. I hope I didn't. I suppose I did, but I hope I didn't. Talk to you soon. In luck, Cash.